Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to set up a helper data table that will allow you to consolidate tons of multiple small tables into one big one. Today's question comes from Sarah in Osaka, Japan. Sarah asks, help, I've got way too many tables and linked tables in my database. Most of them are small with only a few records in them, but I need them. I've got tables for name, prefix, suffix, contact type, lead source type, employment status, gender, marital status, the list goes on. Is there any way to consolidate this into one table? Yes, of course, Sarah, you can put all that data into one table. You'll just need, actually, I'm going to say two tables because I like a second table to describe what kind of data each set is. For example, your, your contact type or your prefix or suffix. So we'll have two tables. We'll take all these dozens of different tables and we'll consolidate them down into two. We just have to know how to use them in our database, like in our queries or in our combo boxes. Let me first explain for everybody exactly what we're talking about here before I show you how to do it. If you want to be able to select an item from a list, for example, with a combo box, then you have to have that data either stored in the combo box itself or in a table. Now, I don't like storing this kind of data in a combo box because if you use this combo box on different forms, you got to update it every time you want to make a change. For example, here's prefix and suffix. This is my ABCD, my Access Business Contact Database. All right, prefix, Mr., Mrs., Miss, right? If I want to add more stuff to this, I don't want to have multiple copies of this combo box on different forms. Same thing with the suffix, junior, third, fourth, and so on, okay? I've also got them for gender, because sometimes you got male, female, unknown, or anything else you might want to put in there, or titles, president, right? I don't want separate tables in my database for all of these, so it's nice to put them all into one table, which I call my helper T, my helper table. I've got a second table set up here that just stores what kind of information is stored. So let me show you how I built this. Right? We don't want 10, 15, 20 little tiny tables over here for prefix, suffix, organization, all that stuff. Right? We want them to be in one big table. So let's open up this new database I got over here. All right, this is my sample class database. Now, let's say I want to do the same thing. I want to do prefix and suffix. So instead of making a prefix table and a suffix table to load combo boxes over here, we're going to put them in a helper table. But first, let's create a helper data type table so that we know what's in each type of data set that we're going to be storing. So let's go to create, table design. Okay, this is going to be helper type ID. That'll be our auto number and then a description. And that'll be text. All right, save this, helper, type, table, primary key, okay? And this is going to simply be a list of the different kinds of data that we're storing in our helper table. All right, what kinds of stuff you want? Well, name, prefix, name, suffix, right? Suffix is things like junior, senior, and so on. Prefix is Mr., Miss, Ms. You saw that in my other database, right? You can have in here marital status. Right, married, divorced, single, and so on. You can have gender. You can have uh, whatever else you want. You can have a uh, lead source. Where did you find them? TV, print, website. All right. So this is just a list of your different lists. So you know what each set of data is. Uh, this will make more sense once you see it in action. Okay. All right. Now I'm just going to move this over to the side over here so I can still see that list so I know what's in here. Okay. Now, let's create another table to store the actual data. This will be my actual helper T. So, right here, helper ID, that'll be my auto number for this table. Okay, a helper type ID, that'll be a number pointing to this other table, one, two, three, four, five, right? And then, of course, the actual data, helper data, we'll call it. That can be text. Okay, save this as my helper T. All right, now let's throw some data in here. All right, this is where you set up your lists. Okay, so let's do our name prefixes first. Okay, name prefixes. We got Mr. One, Mrs. All right, one, Miss, one, Doctor, and so on. Okay, what's next? Name suffixes. Two, 
suffixes. We got senior, two, junior, two, the third, right? Two, you might have the fourth. And you can, you can add as many of these as you want. If you get someone's the fifth, well, you just, oh, that should be a two, my bad. You, if you get someone who's the fifth, well, you just got to come back in here and add that. All right. Let's skip down to, uh, to lead sources. All right. You got TV. You got print. You got word of mouth. All right, you got uh, whatever, you know, web. Okay, so now you see how we're eliminating the need for all these different small tables in your database. If if you have any serious work to do with the table, like you're going to be doing reporting on all kinds of crazy stuff, then yeah, make it th its own table. But for this little tiny stuff, right, that's all you need, throw it in here. And you still have the flexibility of being able to add to it, to change it, right? Now, when it comes to storing this information in your other tables, this is what you're going to store, that helper ID, as whatever ID you want it to be. Okay? So, let me get rid of this guy here real quick. Save changes, share. I'm going to move this one over to the side now because we're going to be working with this guy. All right, let's slide you over here like that. All right. And if you're unfamiliar with what I just did here, this is the foreign key. All right, I've got lots of different videos on relationships between tables, so you should understand what one-to-many relationships are. And if not, I'll put a link in the description below. Go watch my videos on relationships and then come back to this one. you got to have a firm grasp of how relationships between two tables work in order to get this. All right, so now in my customer table, I want to store some of this information. Well, probably all this information eventually, but we'll just, do, we'll just do two fields today. We'll do prefix and suffix. Okay, so let me close my customer form. Let me close all of this down. All right, let's go into the customer table, design view. And we'll come in here. All right. Now, instead of putting in here prefix and suffix and having them in here as text, because we don't want people just typing anything in here, right? They could type in Mr. as M-I-S-T-E-R. We don't want that. We want our data to be normalized. We want it to be so that they have to pick from a list. Okay. So I'll we'll put in here prefix. Now, this is going to be a number now because the prefix is going to be one of these helper IDs. So I like to call it, in fact, prefix ID. That just tells me later on, hey, this is relational, it's pointing somewhere else. We'll do suffix ID. I'll do one more too. I'll do lead source ID. Okay, save that. What's going to be stored in the table is going to be ID numbers. All right, so if I, just to put some data in here so you see it. All right, let's slide over here. So I am up top here. I happen to be a junior. All right, so over here, Prefix ID is going to be Mr. What's the prefix ID for Mr.? Well, that's one. All right. My suffix ID is going to be a junior. So junior is six right there. So that just identifies me as, as Mr. and as a junior. All right. Where's my son? My son's in here too. He's down here. All right. There's my son. My son will also be a one, but he's the third. So he'll be seven. Okay, now I want you to see how this works with the data in the tables. That's what we're actually storing is these IDs. Okay, it's not going to have to be where you have to do that when you're entering data in the forms. In the forms, we can still use a combo box. All right, now how do we do that? Well, let's go over to the customer form. Now that data is in our table underneath the form now, so we're good. So let's go to design view. Whoops, let's open this up. All right, I'm just going to drop these combo boxes down here for now. So come up top here, combo box, drop it there. Now the wizard starts up. I'm going to say I want the combo box to get the values from table or query. That's fine. Next, we're getting our data from the helper table. Next, what do we need? Well, we need the helper ID and we need the helper data. We don't need the helper type ID in the combo box. We're going to refer to it in just a minute, though. All right, well, I'm, I'm going to come back to that. Hit next. How do you want to sort the data? We're going to sort it by helper data. Next. This is what it's going to look like. Now, we see all of it here. We're going to limit this list in just a minute. Okay. Next. And then we're going to store the value in whatever field we're picking. Let's do prefix first. Next. And the label, prefix. And finish. And if you don't know what I just did... You need to learn combo boxes. Again, I've got lots of lessons on that. I'll put a link in the description box below the video. All right, let's see what we got here. Let me save this, close it, and then reopen it again. If I open this up now, I see all of those items. So what I want to do is I want to limit this list of items 
to just the prefixes, not all the helper data. What is that? Well, that's with the helper ID, the helper type ID is one. So I'm going to edit this box and just show that stuff. Now, if you go into the box, here's where we get a little more advanced, folks. So, hey, so bear with me here. This is the property sheet for that combo box. Okay, see combo box? It's called combo 26. That's the first thing I'm going to change. I'm going to change this to prefix combo or whatever you want to call it. I like to call it combo boxes, prefix combo. All right. On the data tab. This row source right here is where it gets its data from. Now, if you have any interest in being an Access developer, I strongly recommend you learn SQL. All right, here's the SQL. Here's what it looks like. Basically, this says select helper t dot helper ID. That says select the helper ID from the helper table, comma, helper data from the helper table. Those are those two fields that we picked in the wizard, right? From where are you getting it from, helper t. And then order by helper data. All right, that's saying get these two fields from this table and sort by that helper data field. Now, for those of you who know some SQL, we're going to add a where condition on here. But I'm going to show the beginners how to do it by just using this little builder button right here. All right, if you're familiar with building queries, this is easier for you. So click on that. That opens up this query builder in the background here. All right, I'm going to close the property sheet for now. All right, this is what the query behind that combo box looks like. Now we want this to just be prefixes, okay? So I'm going to double click on helper type ID and put a one down here under criteria. And I'm also gonna turn that off because we don't need to see it in the box. This is the show row, okay? This is basic query design. Again, I covered this in my lessons. All right, now close the query builder and it's gonna say, do you wanna save the changes made to the SQL statement and update the property? Say yes. All right, what just happened? Well, if you look at that property sheet again, all right, come in here, and now you can see what it did. It said select helper T helper ID, comma, helper data from helper T, where helper T dot helper type ID equals one. That's what we just added. It's a where condition. It says I only want to see the helper information for group one, which is prefixes. Okay, that's what the query builder did for us. You can write this by hand if you know it. I strongly recommend you learn some SQL. I got lots of lessons on that too. I'll put some links down below. One of the beautiful things about Microsoft Access is that you can build some really cool stuff. You can build some really powerful databases without having to learn SQL and without having to learn Visual Basic. But once you learn those things, Access goes to a whole nother level, right? You can do all kinds of crazy, really cool stuff with minimal amounts of programming if you learn a little bit of SQL and a little bit of Visual Basic. All right, trust me, get the basics down first, learn your, your tables and your queries and your forms and all that. That's great. That's my beginner series. Learn relationships. That's next. That's the beginning of my expert series. But then once you get into that, start learning a little bit of SQL. Okay, so this guy should now just show us all the records where helper type ID equals one. All right, let's save it, close it, and open it back up again. Customer form. Ready? Boom. There we go. There's only the prefixes. See how that works? And you can change it right there. And no, I'm not Miss Richard Ross. I am and I'm not doctor either. <laughs> okay. Now let me show you how easy it is to do the next one. That, that was a little bit of work setting the first one up. All right. Want to do suffix? Copy paste this guy. All right. We'll change this label to suffix. Okay. Open up the property sheet. Now there's a couple things we gotta change. Go to the alt tab. All right, first change the control source. The control source is where this box stores its data. We're going to store this one in the suffix ID in the table. That's what control source means. I'm likewise going to change the name to suffix combo. Okay, now go to that data tab. Here's that SQL statement. You don't got to run through all that crazy stuff again. Just change that one to a two. That's all you got to do. Hit OK. Close that. Close this. Save changes. Open it back up again, and look, there's my junior. Junior, third, fourth, whatever. See? That's it. Do the same thing one more time for lead source, right? Design view. See how easy it is now? Let's slide these up a little bit. And, of course, you can make this pretty and put these up here where they belong. I'm just showing you for class. All right. Copy, paste. And do the same thing one more time. 
This is the lead source. Open this guy up. Properties. Go to the All tab. All right, where are we saving the data? That's the control source, lead source ID. All right, the name will be lead source combo. You can call it lead source ID if you want to as well. Sometimes I have both the text box and a combo box for it on the same form, but you don't have to. You can you can call this whatever you want as long as it's unique. Okay, and then go to the data tab, open this guy up. Lead source is data type five, and you can store any kind of information this way that you want to. Simple stuff, simple stuff. I wouldn't put like whole customers and stuff in here. All right, you could do simple things. Helper data, that's why I call it helper data. It's to help. It doesn't need its own separate big giant table. There you go. See that? If you want to learn more about using these helper data tables, I've got an extended cut edition available for members only, silver members and up, where I show you how to make a form to edit and add items on the fly. Right? If you want to quickly add a new prefix or suffix or whatever, we'll pop up a little form here. And I'll show you how to combine all this data together in a query, because if you want to put this stuff into reports or other queries or whatever, you've got to know how to join this stuff together, all right, using inner and outer joins, which is a little tricky, but it, it's not that hard. I'll show you how to do it in the extended cut edition. Here's the database, right? And right now, if I want to add a prefix that's not in this list, okay, I have to go back to the helper table. Add it in here. We don't put one and then whatever is in here. All right, close that. I got to close this form and reopen it so it adds to the list because it won't requery by itself. Okay. But what I teach you how to do in the extended cut is just double click. All right, now I got the name suffixes up or you can double click. There's your lead sources. See, put a new one in there. And then when you close this, it'll be right in that list. That's in the extended cut for members. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, live video and chat sessions, and other perks. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different perks that are available. Silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. But don't worry, these tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making them, and they'll always be free. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a like and share. Click on the subscribe button to subscribe to my channel and be notified of any new releases. Check for additional resources down below the video. Click the show more button and you'll see a list of other links to other videos, downloads, resources, lessons, and lots more. If you have not yet tried my free access level one course, it's three hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. And if you like level one, level two is just $1, and that's free for my members. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page, and you can post your question there. Also, be sure to stop by my access forum on my website. And also look for me on Facebook, Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross with AccessLearningZone.com. Thanks for learning with me, and I'll see you next time.